And it is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank here in the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160, 101.1 FM. Bruce Beeler is on the line with us. He's the author of a new book, Natural Encounters, Biking, Hiking, and Birding Through the Seasons. We might think that because the weather has finally turned nice that this is the uh, ideal time to get out to, into the out of doors and enjoy nature. And, and that's true. However, there's... There is treasure in every season of the year, and that's one of the points of the book that Bruce has written. He joins us actually from Nebraska this morning, where you're birding, aren't you, Bruce? Absolutely. Good morning, Todd. That's what I'm doing, believe it or not. Got up at 5.30, saw the dawn, saw the sunrise and dawn, and saw some beautiful birds uh, before our interview. Did you go there looking for a specific bird? Uh, I am following a migrating bird called a Hudsonian godwit, believe it or not. It's a giant sandpiper, very rare. Most people don't even know it exists. And it winters in southern Chile, and it summers up on the Arctic slope, north slope of the Arctic, up in the Arctic Ocean, uh, right on the in the tundra. So I'm following it in the sort of middle, middle ranges right now. Yeah. You're trying to catch it in transit then. <laughs> exactly. Beautiful. Hey, we've just been through peeper frog season, and, and I don't know about you, but it has to be one of my favorite sounds ever, that and popcorn at the movie theater. Just love the peeper frogs. Um, that's one of the surest signs that we've finally reached the spring, isn't it? Peepers are so much a part of spring, and you know, people forget that part of spring is sound. You hear the peepers peeping, you hear the red-winged blackbirds yodeling, you know, you hear the woodpeckers drumming, and, you know, your blood starts to pump, and, you you know, you start to feel better, and you start to feel younger, and that's a lot about what my book you know, talks about. Yeah, well, I love the format of the book. I want to talk about that before we're done here this morning, but I want to okay. bring up to our listeners uh, that uh, you're really based around Washington, D.C., there in that Potomac River area. Um, that's and that, right. That's one of my... southwest of you. I mean, southeast of you. One of my favorite places to be, and one of the reasons is there's a surprising amount of open and green space there. Um, places like Theodore Roosevelt Island, but I bet you a lot of people don't even know it's there, and, and Arlington National Cemetery, and I love the drive to Mount Vernon. That's really special. What are some of your favorite places there? Oh, there's so many. You know, you're right. Um, Washington is a land of green. Uh, there's so many parks. Um, there, there are parks in the city. The parks in you know Virginia and Maryland. Oh, there's so many. Huntley Meadows, a particularly beautiful one, it's about 10 miles south of the D.C. area, and it's a little marsh, open marshland with a boardwalk, and it's in uh, Alexandria, South Alexandria. That's one of many birders' favorite places. It's also just a great place to get out. You know, you have beautiful walkways. They're very comfortable. They're flat, uh, and you're just out in nature, and you're just feeling good and getting some exercise. That would be probably one of the best. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt Island certainly is one. If you like the woodlands, you can get in that. You're, you know, you're just across the river from D.C., mm-hmm. and you think you're someplace far, far away. So uh, Rock Creek Park, a huge park that cuts through north-south uh, in D.C., the uh, upper part of Rock Creek Park, again, the beautiful ancient woodlands, that you can ride through, you can run through, and you can go bird watching. Um, there's just there's just too much to do, really. He's been all over the world. Bruce Beeler has, and his new book is Natural Encounters: Biking, Hiking, and Birding Through the Seasons. You've even come up here into Pennsylvania and seen some of what we have to offer. If you're going to live in this part of the world, you'd better be prepared for any kind of weather, uh, because uh, if you aren't, you're going to be miserable for a lot of your life. And in your book, you celebrate the seasons month by one month. Uh, was that something you'd learned to do, or did you always have an appreciation for the seasons? Well, you know, I'm not sure. I, I fell in love with nature as a young young boy, uh, so I had a chance to sort of, you know, trial and error, practice, practice and make perfect. Uh, but one of the things that made uh, the 35 years of my you know, office working uh, fantastic was biking to work the year round. So I biked on along the Greenway, along the CNO Canal, and uh, I was able to just see so much and also experience the gradual, sometimes not so gradual, changes of the seasons. And, of course, most people think, oh, it's raining, it's snowing, you can't be outside. Well, uh, if you just decide to prepare for it, as you said, get the layers on, 
uh, you just know you know what to wear, you can do it. I mean, there are a few days, maybe a few days a year that you can't bike to work, but otherwise, you're out there, you're seeing things other people are not seeing, and it really just adds to the day. You know, you're looking at a computer screen all day lo- long during the middle of the day, but coming and going, you can do something completely different. Sometimes, you know, when you're going home at night, I can recall so well seeing a beautiful comet for four or five weeks. You know, that comet was up in the sky. Other times along the river, I've seen uh, runs of shad, the little silvery fish that come not so little sometimes. Mm -hmm. Hundreds and hundreds of shad breaking the surface as they're moving up the Potomac to spawn. Things like that uh, that people overlook, they really make your day. Your book is Natural Encounters, Biking, Hiking, and Birding Through the Seasons, and birding is a a really big part of your life. How long has it been since you were surprised to hear a certain bird's call? Hmm, Probably... Uh, only a couple of days because I'm out with the birds right now. Oh yeah. And I heard this wonderful fluty, uh, high yodeling of an upland sandpiper. This is another one of the sandpiper group, like the Godwin I'm following. And this one lives out in the uh, expansive grasslands of the uh, middle of the country in the Great Plains. And it it does this display flight high over in the sky, and it does this song while it's doing that, and that. I've only heard it three or four times in my life, so when I heard it the other day, it was quite special. What happens to you when you do that, when that happens, when you hear something you haven't heard before or haven't heard in a long time? Well, I think, you know, just like any special occasion, a little bit, a few hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Um, you just feel, you know, suddenly you say, I'm going to remember this for quite a few days. Mm. Uh, it's one of those special moments in time. You may remember it your whole life because that really gets baked into your brain. And it's those memories that, you know, there's memories of nature especially, you know, you know, all sorts of memories, but the nature memories go into your, that that system of, of recall, and you can, you know, you can pull those out from time to time when you need them, and they really make you feel good. Bruce Beeler's our guest. He's a research associate in the Division of Birds at the National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C., which is an amazing place all by itself. Uh, He's been a scientist in conservation for the Smithsonian Institution. He's worked all over the world in a number of different venues. So this book, when you were putting it together, because you've written a number of books, it seems really like a personal book to you. Did it have any sort of a different feel to it as you put it together from some of the other books that you've done? Well, this book essentially wrote itself because it was the story of how I fell in love with nature and learned how to connect with nature on a daily basis, on weekends, and even on the, you know, the special occasion when you go out for, you know, maybe five or ten days, you know, go someplace uh, special far away. And, uh, you know, it's really those three sort of units of appreciation, uh, you know, that you can really wrap nature into all the things you're doing. And the book tries to be a little bit of sort of demonstrating how, Anybody can really bring nature into their lives, whether it's birds or whether it's wildflowers, you know, whether it's frogs singing uh, or trees or, you know, whatever. Uh, bringing that into your life adds that extra dimension, and you can do that, you know, really have that extra dimension make your life more satisfying year-round, and that's really what the book demonstrates one of the big parts of the book the little treasures hidden all throughout it uh, the illustrations tell me about those sure um, my good friend close friend John Anderton a wonderful artist and it's just the fourth book he's done for me and so we've been working together I think for more than 25 years and you know I would I would just tell him what I was trying to to wanted to show uh, the reader and he would sort of capture that, sometimes in send him some photographs, and he would, you know, do research on the Internet and really pull together, you know, the picture of the gray fox at the very beginning of the book is, is glorious. Mm-hmm. What we really wanted to do was sort of show the, the common, regular uh, species of mammals and birds and insects and uh, frogs and lizards, things that you would see but maybe you're not looking for. And it really, yeah, it really does add to the book, I think. 
one of the things that we notice here in our part of the world is uh, the re-emergence of bald eagles, uh, which uh, they're not exactly everywhere, but they are more and more evident around our area here in Western PA. Do you ever get to Western PA, and what are some of the exciting things you know about birds and, and wildlife here in this part? Well, um, I think one of the special places is, is Powder Mill Nature Reserve. That's not too far. I think that's a little southeast of you. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a friend who worked there for a number of years. That's a wonderful place. Uh, Western Pennsylvania is gorgeous. You know, it, it's it's a little behind us in terms of the seasons. The thing that strikes me is when I go f- in the spring from Washington, D.C. to Pittsburgh, you're starting go- going back in time because you're higher and cooler, more continental. And so spring comes a little late to you, which makes it all the more special. But there are so many, you know, lovely little corners, nooks and crannies there um, that anybody can get to. Most of these places are free. The nature is free. Uh, the joy that it gives you is free. It's really it's quite a wonderful thing. So you don't have to travel far uh, to get to these great things. Yeah, And we have a pretty vibrant birding community here. There are a lot of people. It, it really is a family, isn't it, the birding community all across the world? Absolutely, and the nice thing is you have all these local bird clubs. We have, you know, we have one in Montgomery County where I live, north of D.C. There's one in Baltimore. I'm sure there's a big one in Pittsburgh. And uh, these, you know, they again, birds and nature bring people together, and that's that's a real plus. That that society of special interests is really quite wonderful. Bruce Beeler has been our guest. The book is Natural Encounters: Biking, Hiking, and Birding. Through the seasons, it is a wonderful little trip, and we enjoy it so much. And I want to thank you for being with us here on Indiana in the Morning. It was a great pleasure, Todd. Thank you. Have a great day. Find that bird, okay? I will do that. All right. Fingers crossed. (laughs) Bye now. Bye-bye.